Thanks, Jermaine. Um, our first question today, we will um, go to uh, Brandon Such. Hey, uh, Jermaine, so kind of away from football here, I, I wanted to see if you could offer um, some perspective on everything that's going on in terms of, like, the uh, social injustice. So as a black man um, who's kind of living through this, what's, like, how do you, how do you kind of feel through this? How do you take it in? And then also, uh, so what are some of the actions that y'all are taking as a football team in order to, to take action on this? Yeah, um, the last few weeks uh, have been really hard um, just to see everything that's going on in the news and everything. Um, and it, it, I think it struck me as well as all my teammates uh, really hard, white or black, um, because, I mean, we're united here and, um, I mean, we're brothers, so those type of issues affect all of us. Um, and in terms of what we're doing, I mean, we as a team had a very team and staff. We had a very um, productive talk um, in the past, the past couple of days. And um, Coach Smart just let us come up and uh, share how we're feeling. And, and um, we actually had whiteboards. And we had, <laughs> I think it was like a three-hour meeting, um, just, just getting a bunch of things off of our chest, just talking <clears throat> as a team and, and uh, as a program on what we can do to make uh, not only ourselves feel safe, but other people feel safe um, out in the world and in the community. For our next question, we'll go to um, Anthony Dasher. Hey, Jermaine, good to see you. Uh, let me ask you: When you were, uh, you know, back in Minnesota, you know, during the, the quarantine, uh, kind of take us through your kind of your, your thought process. You know, getting ready for your second, you know, year at Georgia, your last year at Georgia. Were you uh, more determined? It was kind of what was, was kind of going through your mind as you got ready to get back to Athens, and what you the goals you kind of set for yourself. I mean, yeah. Uh, um, personally, I, I was I was very determined. I don't think I put my best on film last year. Personally, um, so just going into the season and, and especially coming into the spring, I was really excited <clears throat> to prove some things and work hard and just get better at some things I need to get better at and be whatever I needed for the team. Um, so over quarantine, I was just you know I was just keeping my head down and working hard because I, I mean I came from JUCO, so it wasn't really anything new. Um, my dad had, had actually purchased some weights and a bunch of other things in his, in his uh, garage, so um, I was keeping my head down, and um, I was calling Coach St. Clair, asking what I could do um, just to get better in, uh, in terms of uh, some speed stuff because, you know, I'm a football player at the end of the day. I, I can't just be lifting weights, so I don't know. I was just trying to bounce things off of all my coaches on what I could do better um, while I'm not there, but, yeah, I was really focused on um, not falling behind because, I know it's easy for some guys to uh, to fall in that slump over that time, and, and that was really what I was uh, not trying to do. Uh, for our next question, we'll go to uh, to Seth Emerson. Hey, Jermaine. If you were self scouting yourself, how would you? What would you say you bring to the table in what is a very talented, crowded outside linebacker, edge rusher room? What do you do best to to get yourself on the field? Uh, I mean, I just, I honestly just, ooh, I almost had a cramp. Um, I, I just try to uh, ask my coaches what I can do better every single day uh, after practice. And um, I just try to be what I can for my team, whether that be on special teams, uh, everything like that. I mean, at this level, everyone has attributes. So it comes down to technique and will and um, how much passion you give to the game and how committed you are to the program. So. I just ask my teammates and my coaches what I can do to get better every day and uh, whatever happens after that happens. Do you feel like you're better in anything as far as pass rush, pass coverage, run coverage? Oh, yeah. Um, I think I took, uh, I think I took a, a big leap uh, this offseason because I just think I need to be more violent. Uh, quite frankly, just need to be more violent in, in my game as a, as a whole. Um, pass rush, be more uh, technical with my movements. Um, and in JUCO, my athleticism got me far. And uh, coming here, I uh, learned that the technique takes you farther than anything. So I've just been trying to hammer home technique in every aspect of my game. And uh, like I said, I've just been bouncing stuff off my coaches where I can get better at. And, you know, they they let me know and take it with a grain of salt and then push forward to see what I can do. Thanks. Our next question will go to uh, Chip Towers. Hey, Jermaine. Uh, appreciate you doing this. Um, 
just wondering kind of uh, away from the field, have you found it uh, difficult at all to just kind of be a regular college student, you, you know, when you guys are having to be so careful, uh, I assume in your, you know, certainly avoiding crowds, avoiding parties, uh, doing that kind of thing. But I mean, is it, have you found it, you know, seriously cramping your style or is it, it's just what you have to do to, to, to be what you are? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm a college student, um, but uh, again, I'm a student athlete, so my passion is to my academics and uh, the football team. So um, if they say that, you know, we can't be out and partying or we can't be out in, uh, in a bunch of crowds, and that's what it is. So um, I think a lot of guys on our team are really good about being professional about that because uh, we all want to play. We love it. That's why we came to Georgia. So the coach says can't go out, can't be around a lot of people. That's what we got to do. Uh, next, we'll go to Mike Griffith. Uh, hey, Jermaine, I got a, I got a couple questions for you. I guess it was um, I guess it wasn't this spring; it was the spring before when when Kirby said you were making Superman plays. What 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 exactly did you do? Did you did you jump? Did you Superman over somebody and make a tackle or something? Because he usually doesn't uh, describe players as Superman, but you kind of got tagged with that early, and then I guess. My second question is, he said the offense held their own, and I guess I didn't think that would happen with those first-round tackles gone. Can you uh, give me some uh, some insight into into uh, how these other young tackles are stepping up now? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the first question? The, the uh, Superman. What was the Superman play? What was he? What was he talking about? He doesn't call people Superman very often. Um, like I was saying, like I said before last year, I just. Or in JUCO, I got away with being able to make plays based off my athleticism. Um, so I think that <clears throat> he was kind of referring to uh, just I would be in a bad, bad spot to not make the play, and I'd be able to make a play based on my athleticism is what I can think. But uh, I don't think it's anything super amazingly spectacular, just um, me being in a bad position and then being able to put myself in a better position to make a play. Um, and in terms of our tackles, yeah, we, we had some – <laughs> we have some great guys uh, that are gone, like great guys. Um, but I think we, the guys that we have now, it's a big battle. Jamari, he's stepping up. He's doing really, really good, just really hard competition. It, it's a Georgia, it's the SEC, so uh, next man up. Um, but Owen, Jamari, Warren, Tate, like all those guys, it's a lot of competition right now. And uh, I think they're doing a good job battling and, and trying not to settle and trying to match that intensity in that room that they had last year. Uh, for our next question, we'll go to uh, to Dean Leggy. Jermaine, I want to ask you about George Floyd and um, the you living so close to where that happened. What's it been like for you to deal with the constant questions from your teammates, uh, people like me, et cetera? Um, I don't think there's anyone else that I've – can think of from Minnesota necessarily even the Midwest. How have you dealt with your teammates talking about what the experience you have in, the, in your home has been like? Um, yeah, it, the, the event happened uh, right down the street, but in terms of just the effect it had on me, I think that it was kind of pretty much the same for, for every, every black man, especially on my team. I mean, you can look at, at that and, and you could see your father's face, your uncle's face on that man. And, and for that to happen um, over essentially twenty dollars of, of counterfeit money, um, it just it enraged me. Um, and uh, I know my voice matters, so <clears throat> I don't I didn't want to say anything uh, you know just bad or out of place. So um, I just had to keep my feelings down, and you know what I'm saying just just think about the event and what happened, and and um, just approach it that way. But um, it definitely. It definitely struck it struck a, a, a nerve in me. And again, after that happened, we had a team meeting over Zoom while we were at home, productive again. Um, and and of course, Smart does a good job about that. Our staff does a good job about that, of making sure that we're comfortable and, and just making sure we don't hold anything in. We have a team therapist. Um, they, they're just always trying to make sure we're okay. Not not only physically, we got a training room. They're trying to make sure we're okay mentally. So. Um, I think I think they do a good job about that. Uh, next, we'll go to Mark Weiser. Hey, Jermaine. Um, 
being from, I guess, sort of Big Ten country where you are and, and the Big Ten and Pac-12 uh, not playing this fall, will that taint um, the playoff? Will it taint a national championship if uh, the team wins it? Will people say, do you think it will be fair for people to say that, you know, not everyone participated in, in uh, you know, this season? No, um, I mean, that's other people's opinion. That's not really for me to decide. Um, but one thing Coach always says is just stay ready so you don't got to get ready. So, I mean, we're going to approach this season like it's the regular season, approach every game like a regular game, um, and then many times. So, we can work out. We're just going to keep doing what we've been doing. And we'll have to do our last question today. Jake Rowe, fire away. Uh, Jermaine, you, you mentioned uh, Owen Condon's name a minute ago, and obviously he was up right before you. Um, he, he, we're talking about kind of his injury history and, and the growth he made from last year to this year. Can you can you see any of that, uh, having gone up against him in practice? Can you see any tangible difference between last year and this year for him, uh, seeing as how he's getting more reps now? Oh, yeah. Uh, I can see. I can see that. Um, we went up against each other last year, just like we are this year. Um, and just like just like uh, him, or just like he is, I'm getting better. So I think that he's gotten a lot better because I know I have. Um, so for him to be able to match me at some times is quite impressive. And, and I know he's come a long way off of his injuries. And just to persevere and fight for that spot is it's respectable. Thanks, Jermaine. Appreciate your time, buddy.